good morning. Uh, we were discussing about the electromagnetic fields, uh, whether uh, these electromagnetic fields which are uh, caused by uh, the transmission uh, lines could be harmful for the human and also the animals. So, this is a interesting topic and a concern topic for the research as well as for the utilities. So, during 1990s uh, most of the EMF that is the electromagnetic field research was focused on uh, low frequency exposures particularly from the conventional power sources from the power lines or uh, generating from the electrical uh, substations or could be of the home appliances like uh, the microwave ovens, uh, refrigerators, uh, air conditioner uh, units so on. So, some of the studies have uh, uh, showed a possible link could be between the electromagnetic field strength and uh, increased risk of uh, childhood leukemia. But these uh, findings indicated that uh, such uh, an association was very weak. So, there were no concrete uh, proof that the magnetic fields generated by the appliances and the electrical power lines uh, do support the uh, theory of uh, causing uh, harmfulness to the human uh, life. So, with the age uh, of cellular technology, so several of the wireless routers being used in the cellular networks. Uh, likewise, the portable uh, GPS devices. So, the concerns regarding the possible uh, connections between the electromagnetic fields and the adverse health effects still persist among the people. Uh, though current uh, research uh, continues to point uh, to the same uh, weak association, some of the studies have uh, been conducted on the humans show no evidence of any link between the electromagnetic field exposure and the cancer related or leukemia uh, pertaining to uh, the human uh, disease like the brain cancer, uh, breast cancer so on. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the international health uh, standards uh, recommend and also the continued education on uh, the practical ways of uh, reducing the exposures particularly to the electromagnetic fields. Uh, is very important and people should be uh, told about the uh, Im, uh, importance and also to see that a minimum exposure uh, to the electromagnetic field is uh, necessary for uh, the he health issue. So, uh, typically when you uh, see the transmission uh, towers, you have uh, both the electric field and the magnetic field in the vicinity of uh, the power transmission uh, lines. Uh, the, here are few of the examples uh, for various uh, voltage levels uh, 115, 230 and uh, 500 kilo volts where you see the these are the towers and the distance from the towers you can see that both the electric and magnetic field electric field in kV per uh, meter and magnetic field in uh, mi uh, milli gauss uh, the values are very clearly given here. Say an example of a 500 kV transmission uh, system, you can see the electric field the kV uh, 7 uh, kV per meter being at the midpoint of the uh, tower or uh, very near to the uh, conductor. Uh, as the distance increases uh, from the tower, you can see the values of the electric field and the magnetic field uh, getting reduced. Uh, initially, 7 kV per meter being the electric field and 86.7 milli gauss uh, being the magnetic field near the high uh, voltage uh, tower. So, it reduces as the distance uh, decreases or you go farther away from the tower uh, say 91 meters approximately around 300 feet you see the electric field uh, reducing to 0.1 meter and the magnetic field uh, reducing to 1.4 uh, milli gauss. So, this is uh, uh, information uh, for various uh, uh, electric and magnetic field uh, pertaining to the transmission or uh, uh, higher transmission levels. So, the electric fields from the power lines are relatively stable uh, because the voltage does not change. So, all the transmission lines which are operating at that particular voltage say at 765 kV level the voltage level fluctuation will be very less. So, the line uh, because of the voltage level being maintained uh, 
the electric fields uh, will be relatively stable. Uh, but the magnetic fields on the lines uh, may fluctuate uh, greatly because this is due to the current changes uh, in the response to the charging load. So, as the load uh, which is being supplied by the transmission which is being supplied to the load, uh, when the loads change the current uh, magnitudes change drastically because of uh, this the magnetic fields uh, which are uh, there uh, should be uh, uh, of concern and must be described statistically uh, because in terms of uh, averages or uh, the maximum or minimum values which uh, the fluctuation depends upon the load aspects. So, the magnetic uh, fields above the mean uh, normally calculated for various uh, uh, transmission lines and it could be monitored and uh, measurements could be done. So, various uh, values for the uh, different uh, transmission systems are been uh, given uh, here. As mentioned earlier, the International Commission uh, on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection uh, which is an organization uh, compl uh, comprising of uh, more than 15,000 scientists uh, from more than 40 nations uh, who specialize in radiation protection uh, have, uh, uh, have come uh, to uh, a common uh, platform and they have framed the guidelines uh, pertaining to the electromagnetic uh, fields exposure uh, where uh, the severity of the magnetic field and the electric field uh, near uh, the people particularly who are working uh, in the uh, transmission or uh, distribution or in the substation uh, utilities uh, should not be exposed uh, with the specified uh, values. So, here are uh, some of the guidelines uh, which have been uh, framed by the association of ICNIRP. Uh, you can see here the exposure say for uh, 60 hertz uh, power frequency uh, supply uh, 60 or 50 hertz uh, the arc in the country it is 50 hertz. So, in some of the countries they follow 60 hertz supply. So, the guidelines mention that is occupational the people who are working in the uh, uh, utilities say in the substations or say people who are exposed uh, for the uh, transmission uh, or uh, uh, the substation uh, electric and magnetic field who are working in the uh, utilities or people who are involved uh, in that, uh, they should not be uh, exposed uh, uh, more than 8.3 uh, kV per meter in case of electric field. And in case of uh, magnetic field, the maximum uh, exposure uh, should not be more than 4.2 or 4200 uh, milligauss. This is the value. And in case of uh, general public, uh, it the values of electric field should not increase uh, by 4.2 kilowatt per meter or 0.833 gauss or 833 milligauss. These are uh, some of the guidelines uh, which have been framed and it is uh, necessary to be uh, adopted uh, for the safe uh, uh, healthiness of the humans who are uh, working in the utilities or in the transmission uh, uh, companies. So, electric field and uh, both uh, uh, 1 gauss uh, or uh, 1 tesla is equal to 10,000 gauss. This is one point to be noted. So, which is uh, electromagnetic fields are measured in terms of uh, gauss. So, 1 tesla is equal to 1000, 10,000 uh, gauss. So, the mitigation of uh, the electric and magnetic fields is very, very important and particularly concerning the transmission and distribution uh, systems could be uh, over old overhead lines or a substations uh, the proper mitigation techniques have to be employed uh, uh, so that uh, a proper uh, shielding factors uh, or shielding uh, has to be ca uh, taken care so that it could be reduced for the people who are uh, working in the substation or in the uh, transmission sector. So, the various uh, techniques are uh, being employed uh, for the EHV and uh, UHV transmission and the substation aspects. So, one of the technique is to increase the height of the mast, height of the mast uh, is the tower uh, mast uh, where it is increased and uh, 
the clearances uh, are more. So, with the clearances uh, the electric field K B per meter uh, come down and also the magnetic fields uh, will get reduced on the people who are working on the earth ground level. Second being the conductor management, again we will be discussing about these aspects in uh, detail. So, with the help of the conductor proper conductor management, uh, the mitigation could be uh, done or reduced uh, 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 electro, um, uh, electric field and magnetic fields could be reduced with the proper uh, conductor management and third being the compensation techniques. So, again uh, various uh, compensation techniques could be used uh, to see how this uh, could be reduced. The shielding factor is one of the important aspects to see that a proper shielding will help to reduce the uh, fields. This graph shows you uh, the effect of the mast uh, like increasing the mast, increasing the height of the mast. Uh, you see the reduction for various heights you can see like uh, when the conductor is uh, consider a tower with the conductor here a three conductor bundle here. So, this height whatever the clearances from the ground say this clearances from the ground uh, typically uh, transmission system of 380 kilo volts is considered here with the current carrying capability of 1500 amps uh, for the conductor and the simulation of uh, electric field is carried out uh, for various uh, heights and you can see as the clearance increases uh, the electric field uh, uh, reduces that is the distance from the center uh, is considered here. You can see for various uh, height uh, that is 1 meter above the ground the micro tesla that is the magnetic uh, fields uh, which are uh, uh, could be generated because of the 1500 carrying capability of the conductors. So, the height uh, from 11.34 meters that is a h uh, is considered 11.34 meters to 1214 and up to 24 meters. You can very clearly see as the height decreases the magnetic field uh, uh, increases you can see the values typically for 11 meter uh, uh, clearance height uh, with the conductor uh, uh, being charged at 1500 amps for a voltage level of 380 kV uh, system. Um, the magnetic field could be somewhere uh, 23 to 24 uh, micro tesla as the distance increases the micro uh, the magnetic fields gets reduced you can see for a 14 meter 16 uh, 20 so on at a height of 24 meter you can see the reduction from the 23 uh, micro tesla to approximately uh, around 6 to 7 uh, micro tesla. So, this shows that increasing the mass or the clearances uh, could bring down the uh, magnetic fields particularly the magnetic uh, fields near the uh, ground surface on the uh, near the tower high voltage or uh, extra high voltage tower which are carrying more power. And also it should be noted that uh, magnetic fields as mentioned earlier mainly depend on the current uh, carrying capability of the conductor. So, the magnetic field will be more only when the current or is very high. So, when the voltage is very high current is less. So, magnetic fields of are not of much uh, concern electric field are, uh, is of uh, concern. So, magnetic fields as a power uh, transfer goes high and the current uh, load is higher and then the magnetic fields uh, are uh, ma uh, the magnitude of the magnetic fields also go high. So, this is again a typical uh, 765 kV uh, transmission uh, line uh, tower configuration uh, for a vertical uh, super bundle. You can see uh, two circuits here uh, ABC and again here uh, ABC uh, and you have uh, two earth wires and uh, lightning uh, uh, and the tower uh, uh, schematic here. This is a ground plane uh, intentionally uh, the earthworks are connected here and you see the A, B, C and uh, the faces are uh, changed that is a proper uh, uh, transpose is done to see that the advantages for transmission is better and also uh, reduction of the electric and uh, magnetic fields to a certain extent in case of uh, the conductor carrying more current. So, these are some of the things which uh, some of the uh, magnetic field and electric field values which have been simulated in the uh, using uh, 
developed the software. So, for a 765 kV uh, the curves have been shown both for uh, the untransposed, this is for the untransposed normal um, tower 765 and this is for the transposed uh, tower you can see height above the ground uh, versus the distance from the center of the tower. These are the equipotential uh, plots uh, which uh, give an indication uh, and this gives the electrical uh, field strength from the center of the cover. You can very clearly see here uh, we have tried to plot both for untransposed and also the transposed. Uh, you can see the color uh, red color which is been shown here is for the untransposed uh, uh, part and uh, this is for the ground is the transposed uh, part. So, compared to, to the transport and untransport the electric field strength reduces. Uh, this is one of the advent, uh, management of the conductors uh, placement and going in for uh, trans, uh, the, uh, conditions, uh, uh, very important uh, one of the mitigation, uh, very important mitigation technique which is being followed in the transmission system. Again comparing for uh, the ground uh, field strengths, uh, electric field strengths for different uh, configuration again for the 765 towers, you can see that for various uh, towers we have carried out the simulations. These simulations uh, results uh, very clearly show that for the different towers and also for uh, the transposition and untransport uh, uh, conditions that is a vertical super bundle uh, type untransposed and vertical uh, tower with transport system and also for a flat tower and a delta type of configuration. So, four type of uh, configuration studies have been uh, done. Here you can see the electric field uh, kV per meter versus the distance from the center of the tower. Very clearly you can see uh, when the line is transposed and the conductors are transported the voltage uh, the levels of electric field stress reduces. Uh, this is again in case of delta the pink color shows for the vertical super bundle whereas for untransposed you can see that the electric field strength is very very high uh, near to 11 uh, or uh, 12 kV per meter uh, for the same tower. Uh, with the transposition you come uh, it comes down to 4. So, it reduces by one third uh, value. So, the very clear uh, 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 conclusion that uh, the transposition uh, going in for transposition will be the better option for uh, reducing the electric fields. This is uh, a similar study conducted for uh, the tower configuration for a bipolar HVDC uh, transmission lines. Uh, for uh, various voltage levels uh, 500 kV, 800 and 1000 kV uh, lines uh, from the data which is being obtained uh, uh, in the literature for the uh, tower details have been uh, the data for the tower details have been obtained from the utility and also from the literature. You can uh, this is uh, again a schematic of the HVDC uh, transmission tower. Uh, you can see the ground clearances where the conductors are uh, connected this is a bipolar uh, to uh, line DC line this GW1 and GW2 are the ground uh, uh, wire connections uh, 1 and 2 for a tower. This has a, is a ground plane and the distance between the two conductors will uh, give the pole to pole spacing that as per the standards for 500, 800 and 1100 kV have been uh, taken into consideration uh, while uh, um, estimating the uh, electric fields. So, for the DC uh, we have uh, tried to estimate the electric fields for uh, uh, EHV and uh, uh, UHV uh, DC uh, lines. So, here you can see for a 500, 800 and 1100 kV uh, estimations were carried out for a bipolar uh, HVDC line. You can see the 500 kV uh, HVDC line uh, given in the red uh, um, uh, line shows red curve shows uh, approximately 11 uh, kV per meter uh, electric field. Uh, similarly, for uh, 800 kV it is uh, uh, 13 uh, kV and for uh, 1100 kV system it is uh, 12 uh, kV per meter. Again it depends on the height of the uh, clearances which have been given uh, and the tower pole to pole spacing and the ground clearance very important. So, the values which were estimated have been compared with the actual dimensions of the uh, available data from the literature and the simulations have been carried out. So, for 500, 800 and 1000 kV you see uh, 
uh, the fields could lie anywhere between 11 to 13 kV per uh, meter considering the uh, distances. So, similarly comparison for the ground uh, field strength for both uh, the ultra high voltage AC and uh, DC transmission lines was uh, estimated and a comparison is made here. Uh, you can very clearly see the comparison conducted for both uh, ultra high voltage AC and DC lines uh, for the electric field strength. Uh, this uh, y axis shows the electric field strength versus the uh, distance uh, from the center of the tower. So, uh, for uh, high voltage AC and DC uh, you can see the comparison. The red color gives the uh, high voltage uh, DC 500 kV uh, line which uh, gives approximately the 11 kV per uh, meter which we have seen in the previous case. Again the 800 kV being the uh, 13 uh, kV per meter. For HVAC you can see the fields are substantially less here um, around 4, 4, 4 to 5 kV per uh, meter and in case of uh, 1200 it is hardly around 6 kV uh, per uh, meter. These are uh, done with the proper uh, going in for the transposition of the conductors. Again this would uh, reduce uh, drastically. So, for comparing the uh, 1100 uh, kV HVDC and 1200 kV uh, HVAC or 800 kV HVDC and 765 kV HVDC, you can see uh, the electric fields will be definitely higher in case of HVDC, uh, slightly higher and uh, for HVAC with the proper uh, transposing uh, the fields will be lesser. So, again uh, a comparison of the ground magnetic uh, sorry uh, strength for high voltage AC and HVDC uh, this gives the summary of the system uh, uh, details that from 500 kV uh, DC 765 AC up to 1200 kV AC both for AC and DC. Uh, the for various towers the flat type of towers what was the maximum stress which was obtained a kv per meter as shown here in case of uh, 500 it is summarized as 11.30 765 kv it is 4.77 uh, uh, one third reduction in comparison uh, uh, with uh, the 800 kv uh, dc uh, lines similarly for 1100 kv uh, hvdc it is 12 and uh, 1100 kv 1200 kv hvac it is 6 so uh, almost 50% uh, of the fields which have been uh, uh, or the maximum stress which have been seen in case of dc uh, comparatively lesser in case of ac the second uh, point uh, the one was the clearances uh, height the, as mentioned earlier the conductor management uh, very important. This we have also seen uh, that is a conductor manual going in for uh, the different configuration and also the uh, conductors being uh, going in for a transposition. This will help in the reduction of files, uh, fields, electric fields. So, here or magnetic fields. You can see a small example here, typical case example of uh, the design of uh, vertical type of tower or a delta configuration type of or how the conductors are managed and conductors are connected. Uh, this will be helpful. So, uh, various options uh, have been shown here. See example uh, this is uh, one type of uh, arrangement where the conductors have been connected and this is the clearances. B is the vertical uh, conductors placement like uh, as shown here. Third being the delta configuration uh, in a rectangular uh, uh, sorry equilateral uh, triangle type and the D being the uh, inverted uh, equilateral triangle. The placement of the conductors is being modified and the studies have been uh, carried out to see the fields uh, uh, behavior. You can see here for the magnetic fields that is the micro tesla per k kilo amp. So, it depends on what is the current rating uh, of the um, uh, or the load which is being carried by these conductors. So, for various uh, current rating in terms of kilo amp the micro tesla is being uh, estimated that is the magnetic field is estimated and you see uh, particularly of uh, this configuration uh, the magnetic fields are higher. Uh, and going in for uh, either vertical or a delta or a inverted uh, um, uh, equilateral triangle type of uh, arrangement of the conductors could lead to the better uh, uh, performance of the line and also uh, the magnetic fields getting uh, reduced. So, this is how uh, it is being uh, um, shown here and this gives the per unit versus the distance from the center uh, of the values.
So, the uh, um, further the conductor management again uh, there is a one more option which is being done like the phase uh, splitting. So, phase splitting a uh, typical example is shown here uh, for uh, a 300 kV transmission uh, line carrying a conduct current of 1500 amps and you can see for various configuration uh, how uh, the performance of uh, the magnetic fields from the center is shown for various configuration uh, A, B and uh, C you can uh, see how uh, the configuration is given here. Uh, so, that this will uh, improve uh, the performance and uh, gives uh, a better uh, information to the utility engineers who could plan uh, to see how properly the conductor management could be made uh, for uh, reducing the magnetic uh, fields or uh, the electric fields particularly. This is a one more method of uh, going in for passive compensation. Uh, here uh, you can uh, see that uh, the distance from the center again here uh, the magnetic field uh, reduction is seen with a loop uh, uh, particularly for uh, using a series capacitor of 12 uh, uh, microfarad this is without loop uh, the magnetic field could be slightly higher. So, various types of uh, mitigation techniques are being employed in the by the utilities. Further shielding by a metallic, uh, metallic materials. So, the now uh, materials play a very important role. So, uh, either uh, shielding of this magnetic fields could be made by using uh, a magnetostatic shielding or using a flux shunting mechanism uh, where typically uh, using a proper metallic uh, uh, materials where the magnetic flux uh, which comes in the vicinity could be diverted because of uh, using a proper shielding uh, me mechanism. So, either shielding by eddy currents or by induced current mechanism or going in for magnetostatic shielding will help in uh, reducing the magnetic fields. Uh. Going in for a ferromagnetic or a pure uh, a magnetic shielding aspects. Here again the various materials are available uh, with a different uh, relative permeability that is a initial and high permeability maximum permeability values are also specified. So, various materials like iron steel, uh, low carbon steel, ultra carbon uh, hot rolled, ultra low carbon silicon steel and uh, uh, perm alloy uh, which is also known as micro material. Uh, some of this uh, magnetic shielding uh, using this uh, materials are also been uh, tried out to reduce the uh, fields. How to mitigate uh, the fields uh, particularly for the underground uh, cables uh, for the overhead conductors we have uh, seen for the uh, uh, underground cabling uh, we again it depends on uh, laying geometry in the cable how it is laid and uh, what is the depth of the cable trench which is being uh, adopted for uh, the voltage and the dimension of the uh, cable. So, here also introducing passive loops could help in uh, reducing the uh, magnetic fields also allowing currents to flow in the metallic sheath on the uh, cables. Then shielding by conductive metallic materials will again uh, further help in reducing the magnetic fields of the uh, underground cables and shielding by the ferromagnetic uh, ma uh, metallic materials will also help uh, to reduce the fields. 